now that we've learned a lot about motion and new terminologies like speed, velocity, uh, distance, position, displacement, and acceleration, we're going to um, analyze the motion of an object using a graph. They're called motion graphs. You've probably seen them before a couple times in math class, but we're going to talk about them a little bit more in physics class. We're going to look at both position time graphs and velocity time graphs. All right, so a position time graph, if you just look at this graph for an example, your y-axis is position. Okay, that's very important. Um, I also teach grade 9 math, and in the grade 9 math textbook, it calls them distance time graph. That drives me a little bit. It's a bit of a pet peeve because the axis is not distance. It's position, right? So the zero is the origin, right? You can choose anywhere to be the origin, right? You can choose, say, the end of the screen where you see me here could be the origin. Okay? And then if you move right, away from the origin, just like this graph, right, our x-axis is time, but our y-axis showing our position is moving away from the origin. Then here's the thing. If you start moving back to the origin, then this graph should come back down this way because we're getting closer to the origin again. Remember, that's the big difference between position and distance. If it were a distance time graph, then it doesn't matter if you're going one way or the other. That value should keep increasing on your distance time graph, which is why they're not distance time graphs. They're position times graph. They let you know where you are relative to an origin. Okay, so your y-axis is position, and, of course, you need to stay in your y-axis at the units and also the direction. You can go below the x-axis. What that means is, in this case, if our direction is east, when we go below, we're at negative east, which is the same as west. Okay? Just pause it. All right. Next is we're going to look at the shape of some of these graphs. Now, in this case, I've drawn a nice linear graph. So we have a nice straight line. So what does it mean when you have a nice straight line? When you have a nice straight line on a position time graph, it's pretty much telling you, um, similar to when we looked at those, um, the pictures of, um, say, a car, right? You took many snapshots of the car, and every snapshot was at the same time interval. And if you notice that um, the car is covering the same distance and the same time interval, then what that meant was that it was moving with a constant velocity. This is similar. Right? If we look at this, a straight line means at every certain time interval, we've gone up by this same um, amount. So a straight line, at least a straight diagonal line, means that um, we have a constant velocity. A straight horizontal line would also mean a constant velocity, but a horizontal line would mean that that constant velocity is zero because your position is not changing. You're not going anywhere. Okay, and I can actually um, show you what this looks like. So a couple of times during this lesson, just to get a visual for things, I'll show you this. So here's our straight line. Right? And if I just hit go, and you can see that the person running is maintaining a constant velocity. back PowerPoint. All right, and it's easy to calculate that velocity. The velocity is actually the slope of your line. So if you were to find the slope of your line in a position time graph, it will tell you the velocity. So let's try an example of this. So on our handout, all right, this is just the summary of our whole lesson that we will be going through, but let's look at Example number one. Example number one says, determine the velocity of the rolling ball from its position time graph below. Okay, so to find the velocity, we need to find the slope. So velocity equals the slope. Of a dt graph. 
Okay, if you remember from math, slope is uh, rise over run. Or put another way, in math class, you probably see it as this equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, y is your vertical axis, so that's our rise. And um, x is your horizontal axis, so that's our run. And if we look at th this case, it looks like our rise is 40 meters east. So I'm going to write 40 meters east. And our run is 10 seconds. So 10 seconds. So dividing that, we get 4 meters per second east. That's the constant velocity that um, is being undergone in this question. Let me just pause it there. All right, so let's analyze um, what different shapes actually look like. So here's one example. We just have a simple horizontal line. So in this case, again, your position isn't changing over time. So it simply means um, the object is not moving. But we can say a little bit more about what's happening. And right? because it's um, in the positive direction, we can say uh, the object is east of the origin. And if we had actual numbers here, we'd be able to tell exactly where it is because it is telling us its position. Okay. Similarly, in this case, again, a horizontal line means nothing's moving. It's at rest, at rest relative to this origin point. And in this case, it has a negative value. So negative east means it's now west of the origin. This is the one we just did. Okay, so let's try to analyze it a little bit more. We know that it's a constant velocity, so a linear line means a constant velocity. But we also know it is a positive velocity because the slope is actually a positive value. Right? You could have a negative slope as in this case right here. So in this case, um, we have a negative slope. So that means uh, the velocity is negative. What does it mean to say the velocity is negative? Remember that negative is um, the directional property. And since, um, according to our graph, our positive direction is east, it's simply the velocity is negative east, which means positive west. And so that's just telling us the direction of our velocity. And so let's go and try the second practice problem. page. All right. So in this question, it says for each segment in the position time graph below, determine the displacement and average velocity. Okay. We've already talked about velocity. Velocity is the slope. Let's start with that. So we'll look at first uh, this section. So we have three sections, A, B, and C. So for section A, we can find the average velocity right, by finding rise over run. Now our rise, we're going from 10 all the way up to 30. So it's the difference in that. Okay, remember, don't just look at where the top is because the answer is not 30. We're going from 10 to 30. Or um, based on the equation you do in math class, y2, 30, minus y1, 20. So we have 30 meters. Um, this one says the direction is west, so 30 meters west minus 10 meters west. Then we need to divide by our um, run. So in this case, looks like we're going from 0 to 5 seconds. So our total run, again, you can think of um, x2 minus x1, so 5 seconds minus 0 seconds. All right, so this is going to be 20 meters west um, divided by 5, which would be 4 meters per second west. So there's our velocity in segment A. Now for segment E, segment E you can probably tell just by looking at it, that's a horizontal line. Okay, so 
it's actually just zero. Our velocity is zero. The math will still work if you wanted to do the math, right? You can do uh, y2 minus y1, but they're both the same value. So you do 30 minus 30, which is zero. And then zero divided by whatever your run is going to be is zero. Okay, so we have zero meters per second. Lastly, for C, again, rise over run. But here's the tricky bit. If we're doing y2 minus y1, your second point is over here at 0. And your first point is at 30. So y2 is 0 minus y1, which is all the way up here at 30. 30 meters west. Divided by our run, right? So it looks like here we are at, we go from 15 to 20. So x2, 20, minus x1, 15. So 20 seconds minus 15 seconds. So we get minus 30 divided by 5. So minus 30 divided by 5 is negative 6 meters per second west. But instead of writing negative west, much more um, easier to understand if we simply say, six meters per second west, uh, sorry, east. And the reason is, well, that's just what you would say, right? If somebody asks you for um, directions, it's like, um, where's, where's the library? You're not going to say, oh, it's about negative one kilometer north. <laughs> you just wouldn't say that, right? You'd say it's one kilometer south of here, okay? So that's also what we're going to write when we get to the end of the question. So that's finding average velocity. So before I move on and find displacements, let me just pause to see if everyone's okay. All right, so moving on then, we still need to find a displacement. So let's start with A, so our first segment. Now, if you remember from our one of our first lessons, displacement is simply a change in position. That's it, a change in position. And we've actually already calculated all of them. Because okay? our change in position is our y value, it's our rise value, when we did all the slopes. So for part a, that's our change in position. Okay? It's simply um, 20 meters uh, west. Right? For part b, right? we had no change in position. We started at 30 and we finished at 30. No change in position. So our displacement is 0. And for part C, right, there's our displacement. It's negative 30 meters west or positive 30 meters east. So that's not too bad. So let's move on. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. And we're going to look at some other examples. So up until now, we've sort of looked at examples where we have straight lines. Now, line's not so straight anymore. So what's happening here? It looks like we have a curve. Now, if you look at the, um, the slope, it's hard to calculate the slope because it's not a straight line. But let me just let me see if I can annotate it. Draw. Straight line. OK. So let's say we look at this point right here. At that point, we can look at, say, a tangent like this. So at this point here, at that instant, your slope at that point would be the same as the slope as that line that I just drew. And so at that instant, your instantaneous velocity would be the slope of that line. Now, we're not going to calculate that. What I want you to just understand is uh, more conceptually what's happening. You know, as we go further down in time, Let's look at this point right here. If I were to draw a slope right at that point, it would look like something like that. And then finally, further down, it would look like this at this point. Now, if you look at the slopes of these lines, it looks like the slope is actually increasing. It's getting steeper and steeper. Right? If you think of them as hills, here we have a fairly... Um, 
hill that's easy to climb, and then a little bit harder, and then extremely hard. You're probably going to need some equipment for that last one. Okay, so our slope's increasing. So what does this curve mean? It means we're increasing our speed. We're accelerating, and we're getting faster and faster and faster. Okay, let me just pause there, because I, um, curved distance time graphs can sometimes be a little bit harder to perceive. So now we're going to go over a couple different examples, a different different curves. So the next curve, next one, the next curve looks like this. So what's happening here? Let's go back and look at how the slope is changing. So initially you have a slope like this, and then one like this, and then one like this. So again, it looks like the slope is getting steeper. But it's not getting more and more positive. It's getting more and more negative. So in this case, your speed is increasing, but it's not increasing towards the east. It's increasing towards the west because it's getting more and more negative. Okay, let's look at a couple other examples. This one. So in this case, again look at our slopes at different instants in time we start fairly steep and then get a little more shallow and a little more shallow so what's happening in this case in this case again we're accelerating anytime you have a curve on a DT graph or a position time graph it means you're accelerating and in this case it looks like our speed is actually decreasing okay so this means yes we're accelerating but it means we're actually slowing down. Let me go over another one. Oh, I forgot to erase. All right, so in this case, it looks like we have a steep slope to begin with. So we're going pretty fast, but it's negative. So we're going fast in the, the west direction. And then the slope looks like it's decreasing and decreasing. So again, we're slowing down. So we're accelerating. Right? Now, a thing that's important um, to note is that for each one of these slopes, the slopes is negative. So we are moving towards the west. Right? We're moving towards the west, but remember what we talked about with acceleration. If velocity um, is in one direction and you're slowing down, it means acceleration is in the other direction. So in this case, it means you're actually accelerating um, in the opposite direction. So if you're moving towards the west and you're slowing down, it means you're accelerating towards the east. Let's get rid of these ones. So what we can do then, just to make things a little bit simpler, because we might not like curves, Right? we can draw a velocity time graph. So a velocity time graph, if you're accelerating, will look just like a linear diagonal line. Now, if your velocity time graph is horizontal, a horizontal velocity time graph means that your velocity is unchanging. If your velocity is unchanging, you're not accelerating. If you're not accelerating, then on your position time graph, it looks like the ones that we started with, which was just a straight um, linear line, right, diagonal. But if we have a curve like this one, well, actually, in this case, we have an increasing velocity. So let's go back to our first one, this one, where velocity is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We can redraw that to look like this. Right? We just make the y-axis velocity instead of position, and we have it getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now it is possible for your velocity time graph to be a curve as well, but that only happens when acceleration is not constant, and we're not going to be looking at those cases in this course. In this course, we're only going to look at the cases where acceleration is constant. And we can figure out that acceleration from a velocity time graph. Just like the slope of a position time graph told us the velocity, the slope of a velocity time graph tells us the acceleration.
So let's go on to the next question and we'll actually calculate acceleration from a velocity time graph. So here's question three, and this is the velocity time graph that was on the PowerPoint. It says determine the acceleration of the skateboard from its velocity time graph. Okay, this one doesn't have points chosen for us, but when you're finding a slope, you just choose any two points you want. I'll choose the origin since it goes through the origin. It's a convenient point to pick. And then 10 is a nice point. I'll pick 10. So our rise then would be here. Right? It looks like we're rising up 30 uh, meters per second south. And our run goes from 0 to 10, so our run is 10 seconds. Okay, again, if you want, you can do um, your equation, which is um, acceleration is the slope. You could do just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, and you can do 30 minus 0, which is just 30. And then your x-axis, 10 minus 0, which again is just 10. Right? That's also why I chose the origin, so that this would just be 0. It's just easy to work with. Right? 30 divided by 10, so our acceleration is 3 meters per second squared south. Okay, let me just pause there, see how everyone's doing. So moving on to question 4, I want to sort of talk about not exactly how to calculate everything. Like we would calculate acceleration by finding the slope. But I want to talk about exactly what's happening here. And so this diagram looks identical to this one, but they're not. All the numbers and everything, yes, are the same, but there's a slight different difference. This one says position in the y-axis, and this one says velocity in the y-axis. So if we were to actually have, um, say, a person running, what would it look like? So looking at this one, looks like we have a person starting, say, 10 meters from an origin. So let's say they're getting a head start. And then they're running. Looks like they're running with a fairly steep slope. Okay? But they're keeping a constant velocity because it's a straight line then perhaps, I don't know, maybe they get tired because they were sprinting so fast that after five seconds, they're taking a break and they're just staying in the same spot because their position is unchanging. And then they start running backwards in the other direction. Their position is still um, ahead of the origin, so their position is still positive, but their, um, their direction that they're running in is negative, right? And then they're going to pass where they started until they get to the origin. So that's what's happening here. And I can even show you this on simulation. So I can draw another couple of points. It would look something, something like this. So if you start it run, stop, run back. That's what happens. So what about this one? This one's slightly different. Again, it's velocity, not position. So initially, right, we start at 10 meters per second. Now, the hard thing is, I don't know where I start. This graph, a velocity time graph, does not give me any information about the position, the initial position of the runner. So I don't know where I start. Maybe I start at the origin, maybe I start somewhere far away, I don't know. All I know is that I start running at 10 meters per second. And then I'm not keeping a constant speed. I'm getting faster and faster and faster and faster. So my speed is increasing a great deal all the way up to 30 meters per second. It's probably not a runner, maybe a car. <laughs> 30 meters per second is um, fast. That's like highway speeds. <laughs> so yeah, we should change this to a car, not a runner. But then we have a flat area. 
Now in the above graph, we said the flat area was we stopped and we took a rest. That's because our position wasn't changing. This graph is not position, it's velocity. So what this means is now we're keeping a um, constant velocity. So if we're thinking of it in terms of a highway, perhaps this is where we started onto the on-ramp, and then we increased our speed and increased our speed all the way up to highway speeds, and then after we've merged onto the highway, we're keeping a constant speed. And then all of a sudden, traffic up ahead, we have to slow down, right? So our speed slows down all the way down to zero. Yeah, it's bumper to bumper now, right? So that's what's happening in this case. So you, whenever you're trying to imagine what's happening, you have to remember what is the y-axis saying? Are we talking about position or are we talking about velocity? Okay, let me just pause to see if anyone has any. So after having said that, let's look at the question. Now, it's actually because to find the acceleration, um, we're actually not going to be finding displacement because this isn't a DT graph. You could find displacement from um, a velocity time graph. We're not going to do it in this course. But I mean, if you're interested, um, you need to find the area under the graph. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to find acceleration. Now, the great thing is because all the numbers and everything are the exact same as they are in this graph, our answers are going to be the exact same. The only difference are the units. So instead of writing 30 meters, we are going to write 30 meters per second. And instead of writing west up in this question, we're going to be writing south as in this question. So for, for A, our acceleration, okay, instead of being 4 meters per second west, is going to be 4 meters per second squared south. For part B, our acceleration is zero because our velocity is unchanging. But remember, acceleration is not the same thing as velocity. So even though acceleration is zero, that doesn't mean we're at rest. We're still moving, but there's no acceleration. Our velocity just isn't changing. And C, just like above, where we got um, 6 meters per second east, in this case we'll get 6 meters per second squared north. Okay, we're just calculating the slope. I'm just going to pause. Okay, so here is our position time graph that we're going to analyze, and we're going to try and change it into a velocity time graph. So to do that, we need to find the slopes for each one. But let's just do this qualitatively. So this one is a positive slope, and it's linear. A linear, um, linear relationship in a position time graph means a constant velocity. Right? And you can get that from the, the slope. But for now, qualitatively, we have a positive slope, so we have a positive um, constant velocity. And then we stop. If we stop and our position isn't changing, that means we're not moving. So our velocity should be zero. And then finally, Again, we have a linear line, so we have a um, constant velocity, but the slope is negative. So having said that, what does this look like on a velocity time graph? It looks like this. So the first part, segment A, we have a positive slope. If you were to calculate it, it would, looks like it's just over 20. And since it's not changing, your velocity is not changing. So it's just going to be a horizontal line saying this is your speed until we get to time around 1.4 seconds. Then we stop. So we're not moving at all. So our velocity should be zero. And so we just draw a horizontal line at zero. Then we're moving backwards again. Um, at a constant velocity, but since our velocity is negative, our value should be below the x-axis, just like this. Now, even though the velocity here is below the x-axis, remember, this is only telling us velocity, not position. That doesn't mean we've actually moved to behind the origin. Right? This person 
never actually goes behind where they started from. Not sorry, not where they started from, behind the origin. So they start here at 10, and they go up to 40, and then they run all the way back to zero. They never actually go beyond zero. Even though this is a negative number, that simply means they're running backwards, right? Just like that. So you can see what it looks like. 